Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at an ISA video card that I recently picked up for only £8. It was sold as for parts or not working and had images of the reason why it wasn't working, but I was hopeful that I'd be able to do something or possibly even get it working. So let's take a look. So first of all, I've got it set up in my test bench here and I'm going to just confirm that it isn't working the same way that it was not working in the pictures on eBay. And as you can see on the screen, the problem is exactly the same as the pictures that the seller had included in the listing. So the first thing I thought I'd try, as it was easy and didn't really require much work, was to have a play with the jumpers on the back of the card. I wasn't really sure that this would fix it, as it didn't require much effort to try that, I thought I'd give it a go before trying anything else. But after trying several different combinations, it quickly became apparent that it wasn't the jumpers that were the problem here, so I could move on to something else. So taking a look at the card overall, Nothing stood out as being potentially broken, but with the vertical bars on the screen like they were, it did lead me to look at the memory first. Now, I don't have any memory chips to replace these with, but it won't hurt just to re-solder, re-throw the solder on the chips to see if there's a cold solder joint there causing any problems. So that's the first thing I'll do. And as you can see after doing that, it hasn't made any difference. So either the memory chips are faulty or that wasn't the problem. Now, while taking a closer look at the card, I did spot that some of the chips, some of the legs on the chipset did look a bit dodgy. So I'm also going to try re-soldering the legs on this chip to see if that will help. Now my soldering iron and my skills with the soldering iron are not really up to scratch to solder individual legs as small as the ones on this IC. So I'm gonna use the drag method. I apply plenty of flux, tin the soldering iron a little bit, and then just gently drag it over the legs, hoping that it doesn't cause a bridge while I do it. As you can see, my first attempt didn't go too badly, but I did go back and clean it up again a second time. And while I still had the soldering iron out, I decided to reflow the solder joints on all of the ICs on the back of the card. As you can see, after I went and cleaned up the main IC, the legs look a lot cleaner than they did before. So now it's time to see if any of this has helped and I'm happy to see that it does work. So reflowing all of the chips on the board has worked. I'm not sure which one it was, but I'm just happy that it's worked. Now I'm gonna go on to run a few benchmarks, not really to benchmark the card because it's in a 700 megahertz Celeron system, but just to make sure everything's running as it should be and I'm not getting any crashes or any more bugs on the screen. So, as you can see, the card is working very well. The benchmark scores are not really to be taken seriously as there are no real situations where an ISA video card 
would be paired with a 700 MHz Celeron. It was quite interesting though to see Quake being playable on an ISA card. After all that, I'm happy that the card is now working, even if it was a fairly easy fix in the end. In the future, I may even try to source two more memory chips to expand it to 512 kilobytes in total. Although for now, I have myself a cheap ISA card for testing ISA only systems. As always, thanks for watching the video to this point, and if you should care to like and subscribe, I would appreciate that.